Okay, so like I said, this is going on ISM page 21. So we're going to put a 21 right here. There should be a little blank for that on pretty much everything we do. The title of this is Relation and Function Review. What does this word imply? We're going over it again. It's something you've already learned, right? So today really should be just a big fat review, hopefully. But that doesn't mean that what I'm saying is not important, and that doesn't mean that you might not hear something new. Um, this, you know, this, this is some basic information. Most of it's basically an algebra one type level. But what's important here is the notation and what is expected of you. That, that's what you need to make sure you're focusing on if everything seems super simple. So we're going to talk about relations and functions. We focus on functions a whole lot more throughout the entire course, but it is important we know what a relation is as well. The basic definition of a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So an example could be 2, 0, 4, 7, negative 3, 2, something like that. Okay. Something we could make a graph out of. You could graph it. But there's lots of different, there, but there's different ways you can represent relations and functions, both. So there's four different ways that we can represent them. First one is a table. Second one is mapping. Third is a graph. And fourth is an equation. So an example for your table, we can have x values of 2, 4, 2, and 8, y values of negative 2, 0, 7, and 12, something like that. Could you very easily take that table and go plot those points? I hope so. I hope yes. All right, so then we have mapping, which I know seem, probably seems like a strange word for that. But that's because we're going to map an x value to a y value. So if these are our x values, these are our y values. We could have negative 9, 0, and 2, and 5, 7, and 9. And by itself, that doesn't really tell me much. It tells me what my values are, but I don't know which goes with which. That's why we have to map, map them. Negative 9 would be mapped to 9. 2 is mapped to 5. 0 is mapped to 7, like that. Then could you take that and write down ordered pairs? Hopefully. I would have negative 9, 9, 0, 7, 2, 5, right? Okay, make, gotta make sure we can make sense of all that. All right, so then we have a graph. We're gonna plot, and don't worry about exactly where my points are, because right now it doesn't matter. It's not worth your time to sit there and try, count. Just plot the points on there anywhere you want. Pick your favorite points. If this was a function, it would matter a little bit more, but really you could just, there's a graph of those, you know, of some points there. And then we could have an equation, something like y equals 3x squared plus 7, or whatever. All right, so with relations and functions, we talk a lot about domain and range. Is that old business for you? Yes. So who can explain to me basically what domain is? On the which one? Very good. Okay, so it's, and it, so we have all real numbers on the x-axis. Is our domain always going to be all real numbers? No. I know what you were trying to say, so I just want to clarify. Okay, so then range is our what values? Y values, okay. So are these two things, you feel like they're pretty simple? Okay, I think that they're, they're very simple concepts, but I'm going to tell you, in a pre-AP pre-calculus class, my, my experience for years is, yes, you all feel like you get it, Y'all start, y'all do a quiz, and I don't know what the heck some of y'all are writing down. So, um, make sure you really do understand it, and understand that the order matters, and understand that, you know, what, you, the way you write things matter, things like that. Okay, so, again, pay close attention to what we're doing, even though I know you feel like, yeah, I got that domain and range, we've been doing that forever. Alright, so, what our actual definitions of domain and range are, is would be a set of all possible, x values. Now, 
just because we have like what we think of as the x axis, do we always use x as that variable? Could we use b or a or something else we could, right? So yes, this is it, but it's not always have to be x. So is x our independent or dependent? Independent. So it's really the set of all the independent values. But I'm, even if we're not using x and y, we still think of them as x and y, and that's fine. So then our range is the set of all possible y values, and those are dependent. When we write domain and range, we have a few options of the notation that we use. So we're going to talk about three of the options over here before we actually go and do this. So in order to do that, we're going to draw just a simple graph here. So is that a graph we've seen before? Yep. Tell me some words that this graph makes you think of. Quadratic. Okay, so it is a quadratic. What else? What's that? What's that shape called? Parabola. Very good. Can anybody give me the parent function for this? Y equals what? X squared. Good. That's our parent function. Okay, good. So hopefully those are things that you think of when you see that. Like, we don't know for sure since we sketched it if it really is, but I'm telling you, that is the parent function, so it's y equals x squared. Okay. All right, so we're going to write the domain and range for this very simple function in three different forms. We're going to start with inequality notation. So inequality notation. So the domain. Domain always goes from left to right. What's the smallest x value we get to use? Negative infinity. And we're going to go all the way to infinity. So inequality, we don't put any infinities in inequality. So even though this is kind of a set answer, um, it's all real numbers, and it looks like just that weird r. You can just say it's all real numbers with no inequality sign because it's all real numbers. The range. Range always goes from bottom to top. What is the smallest y value we get to use? Zero. Okay, so since we're doing inequalities, I'm going to say y is, is it going to be greater than or less than zero? Greater than. Can I say greater than or equal to? Yes, and if you're ever unsure, then you ask yourself, because if we're going to do this, you're like, um, I don't know if it's supposed to be equal to or not. You ask yourself, is zero a y value on this graph? If your answer is yes, then we're including it. Easy enough? Okay. Any questions? All right. So the next one we're going to do is set notation, which sometimes you have to do even if you don't want to, and we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, so right now we're only going to use it when we have to, and then we're going to use it some um, later on in the year for some other things. But my domain, it's all real numbers. That really kind of is more of it because it's the set of all real numbers. Your range... Okay, so we still know on the range we're going from zero to infinity. Set notation, if it's not an all real numbers thing, then it has the squiggly brackets. And it's going to look like this. We're going to put a y, because we're talking about y values. Then you put a vertical line. And the way you would read this is, it's the set of all y's such that, and then we write this, y is greater than or equal to zero. So if I get to choose which one, and I could, I would definitely choose inequality over set because it's kind of the, it's say, I mean, it looks very similar and I have to write less here. But that's one of the ways your set can look. And then I'll show you which way in just a second where sometimes we have to use it and it'll look a little bit different than it for, than for this graph. Okay, and then the last one, the one that we're going to use the most right now anyway is interval. And one of the reasons, and I'm going to stay very consistent and do interval, only interval for quite a while because it is the one that makes the most sense, but it also might be the one that you have done the least, and maybe that's why things get weird, I don't know. I will tell you in Delta Math, um, when you're doing these, they give you the little symbols you can use. You basically have a choice to answer the questions with inequality or interval. My suggestion to you is to use interval, even though you could use inequality and get them all right. 
That's not going to help you if on the quiz and the test, I want you to do it in interval. Does that make sense? So especially if you feel like you need more practice with it, this is that's the one I would use. And when, you know, on Delta Math, they show you the answers. I think they show you both. Like, I think they show you inequality and interval, but I could be wrong. Um, because it's been a while since I actually looked at that. I probably should have looked at that so I could talk about it better, but either way. So here's why I think interval is the easiest. I'm going to have to kind of leave it down here so I can read this. So we go domain. All right. And ask yourself, what's, where do I start on the x-axis? I start way out here at negative infinity. So I'm writing out negative infinity. Then I go along and I use all the x's all the way to infinity. There you go. And then you have to decide if I'm going to use parentheses or brackets. Okay? So brackets mean we're including it. Infinity is not actually a number. We can never get there, so you can't give me an actual value. It's more of a concept, and it can really make your brain hurt sometimes. So we never include infinities. So parentheses. Okay. Then range. What is the smallest y value I get to use? Zero. And I then I get to go, go zero, and I keep going up all the way to infinity. Right? Do I include zero? Yes. So it is a bracket. Do I include infinity? Never. Never include your infinities. This is not a number. Okay? Make sense? But do you see how you're literally going left to right, bottom to top? The biggest mistake that happens, other than just random stuff, I don't have a clue where it comes from, is getting these backwards, switching this around. Least to greatest. That's why we're going left to right, bottom to top. You switch them around, it makes absolutely no sense. Okay, we good so far? Any questions? You've at least seen all three types, right? Hopefully, yes, that should definitely be a yes. Okay, so we're not going to do all of these examples. We're going to start with number three. Okay, so, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're going to start, we're going to do number one. Um, my domain. So my domain is the set of all possible x values, right? So in this case, I can't use inequality because I don't have like a continuous set of numbers. I just have these four points here. So here's where whether I want to or not, set notation is the only thing that makes sense. So my, and then I always want to go least to greatest. My smallest x value is a negative five. Oops. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Hang on. I'm bored with being stupid. Okay. Negative five. And then I have negative one. And then I have three. And then I have seven. Okay. Easy enough. It's my x values. So then my range is my smallest y value, negative 1. And it shows up twice. Do I write it twice? No, because it's the same number. I don't need to write it twice. So negative 1 and then 0 and then 4. So even though I have four points there, I only have three y values because one gets repeated. Okay? That's my domain and my range. It's a, it's a discrete. I, mean, I have a specific amount. I don't have an infinite amount of points there. We good? All right, so now we're going to look at number five. All right, and this says an inequality notation. So we're going to do a couple of examples like this because, again, it comes up. You need to recognize it. We may use it for some things, but really for, you know, moving on, we're going to use interval the most, but still want to talk about it. So domain, what's my smallest x value? Negative three. So I'm going to say x. And then are my values going to be greater than or less than negative 3? Greater than. Do I include negative 3? Yes, because it's closed. That's my inequality. My range. Y is something, right? And what's the smallest Y value? Negative 4. This is going to be the smallest one. So I've got negative 4. And is... Are my y values going to be greater than or less than negative 4? Greater than. Do I get to include it? Yes. Okay, see the little questions you ask yourself? Just ask yourself the same questions I do. All right, so let's look at number 6. Now, without an actual equation here, you may not realize what you have here. So I'm going to we'll kind of give you a little hint. But right here, you have, you have this imaginary line that's right here. Anybody remember what those are called? It starts with an A. Asymptotes, good. So I have an asymptote, I have a vertical asymptote right here. I have a horizontal asymptote right here. Okay, so that's going to help me make sure I understand what I'm doing with my domain and range. All right, so what is my smallest x value? 
negative infinity, which we don't write infinities for, for inequality, but I still need to think that. So negative infinity, and I'm going to use all my x values until I get to 3, right? So that means I'm going to have all of the x values that are related to 3 how? They have to be less than 3. Do I include 3? No, because there's an asymptote, right? But then I have more to my graph, right? So then I have to say and x. So I start back over at 3 and keep going. x is greater than 3, and I can keep going like that. Okay. That means for y, I'm going to say I have y is less than 0 and y, oops, y is greater than 0. Another way to say those is to, since all I'm leaving out is 3 and 0, right? I could say also, oh, you wouldn't have to say it in, like you wouldn't have to do this and this, but you could say x cannot equal 3 and y cannot equal 0. That's another way to do it that kind of simplifies things. Any questions at this point? All right, so let's look at interval notation, and hopefully you will agree with me that it is a little bit more concise. Now, I, don't, I know you can't really tell, it looks like blobs, but there are arrows on that. So we are gonna do number seven. So this time it says in interval notation. So interval notation, I get to write stuff down, is, is not what I thought. Remember like on the, on the inequality, I said, what's our smallest y value? Like, okay, we're at negative infinity, but I didn't write that down. I'd like keep that in my head and then figure out which way the signs went. Here, my x is going to start way out here at negative infinity. So I'm going to write down negative infinity. And then I go along. My domain is continuous, and I'm going to keep going to infinity, left to right. Do I include infinities? Never. So parentheses. And y'all, my board updated last year, and unless I write really slow, which I have a really hard time with, sometimes my parentheses kind of look like pointy brackets. Um, I was I was real careful on the front. Those are parentheses. If mine are, if they're actually supposed to be pointy, I'll let you know. Okay, Other, it's not worth me trying to fix them every time, and I'll never remember to write slow. So, all right. So then my range. What's my smallest y value I get to use? Negative five. And then going from bottom to top, my my range is continuous until I get to what? Five. Okay. Then you go. All right. Do I get to include negative five? Yes, and if you're unsure, you ask yourself, is negative 5 a y value on the graph? The answer is yes, I include it. Do I include 5? Yes, there's my domain in reach. See how easy that is? Left to right, bottom to top. Don't do it backwards. Okay, number 8. This is a line with a hole in it. If it was just a line, it would make things a whole lot easier, right? But my domain, I start way out here at negative infinity. And then I'm going to go, I get to use all my x's until I get to what? Negative 1. Do I include the negative infinity? No. Do I include the negative 1? No. That's the whole reason we're doing that, right? But then I have more. So I have to start over, but with this, instead of like an and sign, I have a connector. What's my connector? The u. It's a u without the tail, because it looks like a u, it's not really a u, but it does mean union. Okay? Just like a... Almost like a puffy V, since you don't have a little tail on it. Then we start back over at negative 1, and we go to infinity. Right? Make sense? All right, so you write the range. Check yourself with me, make sure we agree. Ask me any questions if you have them. Okay. Because some people have such a hard time with this, but nobody really ever asks me questions, it's I I'm much better equipped to help you figure something out that you're confused with if I understand where your misconceptions are. And so if you don't you know ask me questions or say things to me, then I can't figure out where those are. Does that make sense? Okay, I mean, you got to give me some information so I can work off of it. All right, so let's look at number nine. What's my smallest x value? It's not an, it's not an actual value. Where do I start on my x-axis is a better question. Negative infinity, right? 
and then my way out here at negative infinity, my domain is continuous until I get to zero. Do I include negative infinity? No. Do I include zero? Yes. Where do my y values start? Negative infinity. Not right here, right? Because it's going to keep going, so it's going to be negative infinity, and it's going to go all the way to infinity. You good? All right, so we're going to jump to, I want you to do number 12. I want you to do number 12. I'm going to give you a second to do that. Now, I didn't finish it. I didn't put my, my brackets and stuff up there, but do you agree with my numbers at least? I counted right? Okay. So, on the domain, do I include negative 4? No. Why? Open circle. Very good. Do I include 1? Yes. Why? Because that's a closed circle. All right. On the range, do I include number negative 7? Yes. Why? It's a value on the graph. Very good. All right, so now when we're going from bottom to top, as I go, okay, oh, my range is continuous, continuous, uh-oh, I don't get to use that y value, but it's used over here, so that makes it okay, right? So I keep going until 2. Do I include 2? Yes. Okay, good. Any questions about that? We're sure. We got it. All right, good deal. So let's talk about functions, okay? A function is a type of relation. So basically all functions are relations, but all relations are not functions. Um, in which each element, which means each value in, that you have there, um, each value of the domain, which is, you think of as x, is paired with exactly one, that word exactly is very important, one element of the range, which is y. Any questions? Well, you've heard that before, right? That means one of them can repeat and one of them cannot, right? Which one can repeat? Range. You can have more than one y value, or you can have a yeah, you can have a y value that goes with more than one x value, but not an x value that goes with more, one or more y values. So we have to be able to determine from a table, from a mapping, from a set, from even an equation, and from a graph whether or not we have a function. So when we look at 13, based on what we have, would you say this is a function? Yeah, each x has only one y, right? So this is a yes. If you look back on the front, I put, I did this table like this on purpose. Is this a function? No, because 2 goes with negative 2 and 2 goes with 7. That's a big fat no, but that's okay. We were talking about relations, right? Okay. So then we look at number 14 with our mapping. Is this a function? No, because if you write out your ordered pairs, you'd have negative 9, negative 2, and negative 9, 5, and that's a problem, so this is a no. When we look at 15, does is there something there that repeats? The range repeats, all right? I have, a, I have two twos and two eights, but they're both y values, so is that okay? Yep, sure is, so this is a yes. All right, good job. So then we have the vertical line test, or your teacher may have called it the pencil test, if you kind of run your pencil along or whatever. But if a vertical line, and we're also going to have the horizontal line test at one point, that that's not something you've heard before, so we'll make sure we know which is which. Vertical line test, if a vertical line intercepts a relation at more than one point, then the relation is not a function. So you can either literally draw them or just think about it with your pencil. But here, if I drew vertical lines down here, no matter where I draw it along the function, it's only going to hit it once. 
So that means it's a function, or through the graph, I should say, that makes it a function. Is 17 a function? No, it fails the vertical line test, right? And guess what? So like this point, this point right here, oh, let me see, let me use these points. This point is, let me erase this, sorry. That way you can read it better. This point here is one zero, and this point here is one two. So you, when, you, when you fail the vertical line test, it's because the X is repeating. So that's how you kind of connect all that together. But it totally fails the vertical line test. You wouldn't have to know ordered pairs. So it is a big fat no. All right, on 18, we have asymptotes again. I have a vertical asymptote here and a horizontal asymptote here. Is this a function? Yes. Because although the asymptotes are part of the graph, they're not really part of the values. So it's, it, you wouldn't say it fails because of the asymptote. I would still, it would still pass the vertical line test totally. So the answer is yes. Okay, we good? Any questions at all? Awesome.